So it takes about three days to shift the biological mechanisms to make you a morning person. Three days of pain, the rest is easy. Now, if you are a very strongly genetically determined night owl, that's a thing. So there are genetic mutations, they call them polymorphisms, that make some people night owls. They feel best psychologically and physically going to sleep at about 1, 2, or 3 a.m. and waking up somewhere around 10, 11 a.m. or noon. Mm -hmm. That exists not just during development or teen years, but that exists, not just for social reasons. Other people are true morning people. They feel absolutely best going to sleep around 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. 10 p.m. will be late for them and they feel great waking up at four, five, or 6 a.m., okay? Most people feel best going to sleep somewhere between 10 and midnight and waking up somewhere between 6 a.m. and 8 a.m. or so, maybe 5.30 to 8 a.m. So those are three bins of the night owl, the morning person, and then the more typical schedule, but it's heavily weighted toward that typical schedule if you look at the general population. If somebody wants to get up earlier, you need to stack the four primary, what are called Zeitgebers or timekeepers. So named because some of the early chronobiologists that discovered this stuff and the underlying mechanisms were German. So the number one Zeitgeber, the number one way to shift your circadian clock, which is this cluster of neurons that sits a few centimeters above the roof of your mouth, is to view bright light at a time when you want to be awake, aka the morning, okay? So that's why I say get outside, look at the sun, toward the sun, don't force yourself to stare at it, don't damage your eyes, blink as needed, no sunglasses, eyeglasses, corrective lenses and contacts are absolutely fine, even if they have UV protection. However, if you combine that with another Zeitgeber, the second most powerful Zeitgeber is exercise or movement. So if you do some jumping jacks, you skip some rope while facing the sun, now you're starting to stack different Zeitgebers. And I'll explain the mechanisms in a moment. If you then also add caffeine, you can entrain, as it's called, the circadian clock to be alert at that time a bit more. And I'll be honest, if I'm going to exercise first thing in the morning, I need caffeine. I can't wait that 60 to 90 minutes. If I need to jump right into exercise, I find it's easiest for me to do 30 minutes after waking, three hours after waking, or 11 hours after waking. And a lot of people find that the same, but of course, exercise when you can, because it's that important. But if you want to quote unquote, optimize your energy levels for exercise, typically people will notice that has to do with your temperature rhythm. Okay, so we've got sunlight, we've got exercise or movement of any kind. It could be jumping jacks, could be walking. You don't have to do a full workout. And then caffeine and in some cases, food. I'm not big on eating first thing in the morning. I don't like to eat until 11 a.m. or noon. That's when my first meal arrives for me. Just naturally, that's when I get hungry. It's all caffeine and hydration prior to that. But if you were to eat something first thing in the morning, that's part of the way you entrain your circadian clock to essentially wake you up earlier. And then the fourth one is a social rhythm. If you're interacting with other people, you are going to entrain your clock to that as well. There's a social component to it, circadian entrainment. Now, the pathways for these are from the eye, in the case of viewing light, to the circadian clock, the suprachiasmatic nucleus. In the case of caffeine, it's more general. In the case of exercise, there's literally a brainstem to circadian clock connection, a big superhighway of neuronal connections that then so-called entrains your circadian clock. Remember, your circadian clock generates an intrinsic 24-hour rhythm such that if we put you into constant dark or constant light, you would still sleep for a given bout and then be alert for a given bout with a little bit of a nap. It just is what would call free run. It would drift a little later each day. This is what happens when you go to Vegas. This is what happens when you're in an environment without a lot of cues about the day, uh, the sunlight uh, rising and setting cycle. Mm -hmm. Sunlight exercise, caffeine and eating, and social interactions bring your circadian clock into alignment with all of those Zeitgebers. So when I said it takes three days, if tomorrow you want to start beginning the process of becoming an early riser, you'd set your alarm for 5 a.m. No matter what time you went to sleep the night before, you're going to get up and you're going to do the four things that I described. Maybe leave out food if you don't want to eat. Maybe leave out caffeine if you want to delay by 90 minutes. It's going to hurt. And then by the early afternoon, you'll be dragging a bit and you just have to be careful to not overindulge in caffeine, which will then cause you to fall asleep later. Then you want to go to sleep at your now naturally slightly earlier sleep time. The next day, you'll notice it'll be a little bit easier to do the morning routine I just described. And by the third day, you ought to be waking up with or before the alarm by a few minutes or moments because your circadian clock has phase shifted. 
Okay. It's phase advanced. As we say, your circadian clock intrinsic to you generates a 24 point two or a 24.3 hour rhythm. It's not perfectly 24 hours. And that we believe, we don't know, but that you're able to then shift that clock in one or the other direction. You can phase advance. So you wake up earlier and go to sleep earlier. You can phase delay. 